we will be talking about uh, the basic intensity transformation functions um, that are used in image processing so continuing from the last lecture uh, basically we have some image like this uh, and we transform it to get a, 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 like the output image and what's special about intensity transformation is that each pixel in this output image is basically input given uh, is basically a something like this so we have a pixel here r and we have a pixel here which is s so s is simply given by t of r where t is some transformation function now uh, in this uh, video we will be going through different transformation functions which are possible and also discuss uh, what are the properties of, of, of those functions and um, when and why they are used so to start off with uh, initially we will have the negative the negative transform and uh, what what the negative transform is s is equals to t of r which is l minus 1 minus r and here l is the intensity level so for an 8 bit image l would be 256 so in that case uh, like for 256 uh, uh, in a intensity values uh, so this formula would reduce to 255 and minus r so if the input pixel here is 0 the output pixel will be 255 and likewise like and vice versa so why do we use um, um, negative image negatives and how does it look like so if we draw a graph where this is r and this is s it means that this is the input pixel and this is the output pixel then the graph for this particular transform would be something like this so this is representing l minus one this again also is representing l minus one now um why do we use uh, negative transform well we use negative transform in images where maybe we are currently having a black background and it would be better to have a white background or even vice versa so in in the figure 3.4 given in book we can see that uh, on the left we had an image in which it was uh, black uh, background but we when we use image um, negative and we got the image on the right it uh, like the details were uh, much better visible in the image on the right hand side so this is where um, we use uh, image negatives and then the second type of uh, transform <coughs> sorry the second type of transform we have is the log transform log transforms right so in this case the equation is s which is t of r and uh, this is given by c log 1 plus r and one here is basically to um, like to exclude log of 0 because if r is 0 then log of 0 is uh, undefined and c here is uh, constant um, so what does this transform look like so if we draw it um, this will be something like starting here and oops uh, and something like this so uh, <laughs> consider this a bit more smooth uh, this side so yeah this this is how it would be like and now uh, the question would arise ki on in, um, so I was talking about the log transform and uh, uh, sorry for this so I was talking about the um, log transform and now the question arises uh, when is log transform to be used and 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 why so so just uh, pay attention to the graph of uh, of um, log of uh, one plus r <coughs> sorry wait 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 yeah so to understand uh, where we will be using uh, log transform just pick up two pixels here right and then pick up two pixels here so these two pixels are equally distance uh, i mean they have the same distance from each other now if you see in, in this one 
okay this will come a bit here right so for a given uh, input so you can see that the difference here is a bit more than what was input and if you see the same thing here so if you draw two lines here like dotted lines here and if you see the distance on this one so now the distance is very less even less uh, as the input now what is this suggesting this is suggesting that the the pixels which have lower values um, like we are expanding them and it's kind of uh, like we are uh, making them more available in the output image so earlier maybe the details were getting too dark or too lost in it but now we we are able to basically get more difference in the lower pixels and uh, so so this what i told you is basically uh, can be done with the power function as well so power function which will be later c will be um, r to the power gamma where gamma is a variable but another thing about uh, log transform is that given a domain sorry given an um, input which has a very high range high intensity range so let's i mean if, when we are talking about um, 8 bit pixels uh, it has 256 different intensity levels but let's say um, just take example of fourier transform in fourier transform the output um, can go as high as 10 to the power 6 now the difficulty here is like how do i print it <laughs> because um, when i uh, uh, when i print it look, using some display function there are certain uh, pixels which will be neglected uh, because they are having very low values so what i do it so instead of, uh, of uh, like plotting it in 10 to the power um, uh, 6 range i i like um, map it to a lower range and this is where log transform is used so it is highly used in fourier transform or in um, any similar case when we are trying to reduce the intensity range of a given image so this is like where log transforms are more used and then comes what, what i was talking about the um the next thing which are power transformations and these power transformations are also known as gamma transformations now what happens in this is uh, again we have the output pixels represented by s which are t of r and now this formula would be c r to the power gamma where c will be some constant and gamma is uh, like this is why it's known as gamma transformation this defines uh, the type of transformation so let, let me see now let's say c is 1 so if c is 1 and if gamma is also 1 then s is equal to r which means the input and the output pixels are identical or similar in that case it will be a diagonal like this like a straight line but if if the value of gamma decreases from 1 and it goes towards 0 this line would go like this like this and obviously um, like uh, just don't think that um, the value will converge here um, this is more just to get an idea of shape the values it will be different and this is how it is shown in the book as well and as we decrease the value of gamma this will be more and more like uh, like this so again you can see that this is the same shape as the log function what we had discussed earlier so, so, so they do the same thing as um, log function. They basically help us to see better the lower pixels, the details that is missed out in the lower pixels. They, they help us to better see it. And if you open the book in 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 Figure three point eight, we can see that in the uh, in the MRI image uh, in the circle, uh, how the details are getting more and more clear um when we in, when we decrease the gamma similarly if so so this was for gamma values one uh, so gamma values one and this for for uh, gamma gamma values less than one but what if i increase the value of gamma so then the uh, inverse is true now the values would be a bit like this oops <laughs> this is 
I'm not well drawn basically the opposite of this one so like this and more obviously they don't converge here this is just to get a shape of uh, what exactly they would uh, uh, look like they won't converge at a, at a one point so I mean it is also mentioned in the book this is just to get an idea of the shape now what is going on here now the same thing is happening in in, in these uh, lines so we'll use a difference so in in the lines uh, which are here under this where gamma is greater than one so in these cases the opposite is true now we are trying to get detailed which is lost in the higher pixels so when the image it appears washed out there are like you cannot see the details between the white pixels and in that case we will be using uh, power or gamma transformations with gamma which is greater than one and that you can see in the satellite image uh, in figure 3.9 so if we increase the value of gamma the, then the like you can see initially it is a bit washed but it, it gets more and more clearer basically i'm referring to the book um, i have a, the physical copy of the book so i'm referring that so nice that is brilliant so as we go ahead now um, the next type of uh, transformation is so, so uh, like as of now it was all constant to one function but now we are we will be using different function for um, different uh for like for different range of intensities and the name is piecewise linear transformation function so it will is pi oops <laughs> it is piecewise linear transformation functions transformation functions of a big name so <laughs> took some time to write it so that's okay so in this case um, as I as I told you earlier we are be using different um, different transformation functions for different intensities uh, for different range of intensities no just I okay so first of all I will create such function just to give you an idea of what it can be so maybe we have one point here we have one point here so we go linear first Okay, let's make this here and then we then we do a huge spike and then again we go linear so what is happening is so all the pixels in this range are same all the pixels in this range are also same but we uh, are like um, not same I mean it depends on the function but we can see that there is a sharp increase here so this means that uh, the pixels well values in in this range or the intensity in this range is more highlighted than this or this and the value and like what point to select this and this this um, will depend on what kind of task we hand and on the particular kind of image so we need to tweak this to see which one works best for us and we can see in figure 3.10 how we are using we are initially uh, like r1 we are using two different values of this to get two different results and we can see that it, it's much more meaningful as compared to um, the first one and this is also known as uh, con as contrast stretching now why is it used because in in like while capturing the image maybe we are only able to capture some um, a given range of contrast or maybe some defect with the capturing device or anything like that and in to correct that we will be using contrast stretching now the next one is intensity level stretching all right yeah so here it is intensity I'm still getting used to this so intensity level uh, slicing sorry slicing so intensity level slicing now what what it means here 
now we are going to filter out some intensity some range of intensities uh, um, that we that we that we would like to stand apart okay so for example its uh, diagram can be like this or it can be like something like this now what is happening here is uh, so this is the lower value the lower pixel value the the high, highest pixel value so this can be zero or, or like whatever lower pixel value is and this will be the the higher pixel value now what what is happening here is all the all the intensities which fall in this range will in the final image will be white and all other uh, pixels having intensity in this range or this range will become black so this is the threshold operation but i mean uh, like a variance of the a variation of the, th the threshold operation instead of just choosing uh, one value we are having two values like this so it is a bit of variant um, that of the normal threshold function that we use and in this particular case uh, what we are doing is the same thing but in just a mi minor changes the values that are present here are um, are more highlighted but the other pixel values are still there so we are not excluding all of the values like we did here in this case the these values will also be there but um, this will be more highlighted and again we can see in 3.12 how it works uh, the first being the original image the second image being the output that we get from using this this type of transformation uh, like, like the thresholding type transformation and the last image uh, on the right hand side we see is uh, what we get using this transformation.